Are you guys wondering how the Yamaha RXA 6A AV receiver did in our bench test results? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. I know you guys have been waiting a long time for me to do this bench test report on the new Yamaha RXA 6A 9.2 channel Atmos 8K receiver. Um, I spent a lot of time analyzing this thing, and I, I just want to stress to you guys how much back and forth I had with Yamaha because I did find some technical issues in my measurements. And I went and reaffirmed and confirmed and sent them my measurements and they confirmed what I found. So I know everything that's in this test report is accurate. I know sometimes it takes a long time for me to get these test reports out, but I also want to make sure that what I publish is accurate. And I also want to kind of give you guys a feeling for if these measurement artifacts that I see if they really are an issue or if they're just something that's academic. I think it's really important when, when somebody has a piece of audio equipment, like the audio precision I have down here, you got to be careful uh, with what you put out there on the internet and what you claim is good or bad, because you can make or break a product if you have the reach. And we have the audience, obviously, that watches what we do. And I always want to make sure I put things into perspective. So um, when I go over all these measurement results with you. I'll tell you whether or not I think this is an issue or if it's audible or if it's just an academic thing that I noticed. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys and we're going to go into this test report. By the way, the entire test report is down in, in the uh, link below. You can go and read the whole thing. It'll go more in detail than I'm going to go in this video. I just want to kind of give you explanations of all the different graphs so people understand it. Uh, please hit the subscribe button now and hit the like button. I really appreciate the support on this channel. And with that said, let's get into it. So as I said, this is on our website right now if you want to dig into it. But I think it's great to just go over each graph one by one. Here you can see the Yamaha RXA 6A 9.2 channel AV receiver. I want to show a picture. This is uh, on my test bench area that I was testing it at. So the first good news is I measured the, I spent a lot of time measuring the preamp outputs because there's a lot of people that buy a receiver and then they later decide to add external amplification because they want to have more power, cleaner power. They want to drive a hard speaker, you know, more effortlessly that most AV receivers simply can't do. And I always said that a receiver should have at least two volts RMS clean output. Anything less than that is a really prob is really problematic because most AV amplifiers have a gain structure of between 26 to 29 dB, depending on the design, and you typically need at least two volts RMS uh, unclipped to drive those amplifiers into full power. You don't want your preamplifier clipping before your amplifier runs out of power. So two volts is my kind of my threshold here. And the good news is I measured the analog outputs on all the channels to be clean at up to four volts RMS unclipped, which is twice the voltage that you would need to drive most amplifiers. And the XLR outputs, the cool thing about this receiver is it has XLR outputs uh, right here, and you get double the voltage on that. You actually get, um, let's show you here. So yeah, the, the XLR outputs actually give you eight volts RMS output. So that's really good. Really, really good right there. Uh, one thing I wanted to also mention to you guys, most of my testing, unless otherwise stated, is done with the receiver, the impedance switch such to a high setting, high Z setting or eight ohms or more. And eco is turned off unless otherwise stated. So the first measurement, I was looking at just the pure analog input using an analog input to this preamp, measuring the analog output. How clean is it? And I used it in pure direct mode, and I got incredible results. I mean, this is this is a result you would see in a really high-end um, dedicated two-channel preamplifier. So you can see right here, the bandwidth was basically out to the limit of my scope. I can't sweep beyond about about uh, 80 kilohertz 
to get meaningful results. This thing was flat here and the distortion was extremely low. It was at um, 0.001% THD plus N. And that's basically, if you want to convert that to sign ed, I know the guys at Audio Science Review love the sign ed measurements. There's no magic to it. You just do 20 log of the distortion divided by 100 and you get 100 dB. So that's state of the art right there. That's an incredibly good uh, low noise floor, low distortion um, analog preamp section. That's good news. So I wanted to see what the difference was putting an analog input measuring straight versus pure direct. And you could see here there was a difference. The straight mode, or the pure direct mode was ruler flat like we saw before. The straight mode um, engages the DSP. And you could see that it also engages the DAC, which shows you the sampling rate limit. Uh, the Yamaha has actually got a really high sampling rate. It's a 96 kilohertz sampling rate. Most preamps are 48 kilohertz sampling rate. And you usually get usable bandwidth about half of the sampling rate. And you could see that here at about 48 kilohertz, the receiver starts rolling off with the straight mode engage. And the distortion went up as well. So the distortion in pure direct was at 0.001. It goes up to about 0 0.005 at the higher frequencies. Not something that's audible, but it's definitely something that's measurable. So if anyone says, hey, there's no difference between straight and pure direct, there definitely is, especially when using an analog input, as you can see in this graph. So then I um, basically wanted to show the SNR on the analog input. I had to drive the input to 410 millivolts to get two volts out when I cranked it up. Got 106 dB A weighted, two volts RMS in, uh, in pure direct mode. And in straight mode, it went down to about 82 dB. So you're getting some noise with the um, analog to digital converters. Yamaha has never really seemed to prioritize the quality of the analog to digital converters in their AV receivers. I've seen this before, even on the CXA 5100 and 5200. They have state of the art DACs, but you know, decent analog to digital converters. So you really don't want to use the um, the analog to digital converter on an analog source if you could avoid it. Use pure direct if you want the very best noise floor, you want the very best frequency response and distortion. So next up, I used HDMI and I wanted to start measuring the preamp outputs um, to see what the voltage looked like on all the channels. And here's where I ran into a little bit of an issue. So if you look at this graph, and you look at the at the very low vertical traces here that go down to 0.002%, that's in pure direct mode. That's really low distortion. And you could see the preamp doesn't clip to about four volts, a little over four volts. And you could see I put it, I put the curses on 0.1% and 1%. And you could see that you get, you know, at 0.1% it's 3.9 volts RMS, and at 1% it's 4.2 volts. So right around four volts, you get clean output. Um, and then when you go into straight mode, and this is with the uh, digital input, the straight mode, the distortion goes up, you know, not significant, but it definitely goes up. It went from, you know, 0.002 to about 0.005, still inaudible. But here's the interesting thing. You can see a couple of these uh, graphs that have much higher distortion. They're at 0.05%, which is about 70 a little under 70 dB sine ed, 66 dB, something like that. Um, so yeah, I was curious what the heck that was. It turns out it was the center channel and the surround left and the surround right channels. And I tell you, I measured this thing probably a dozen times trying to figure out what the heck was going on. I thought it was my cables. I thought it was something in my test setup. And I spent hours back and forth with this and then going to Yamaha. And then I had to wait for them to confirm it in Japan, which took forever. Nothing, nothing bad against them. It's just that's how it is. So I wanted to look a little deeper. And what I found was I ran a plot here. As you can see, the sign. Ed. This is a complicated graph, but if you spend your time looking at it, it's quite cool. I plot the THD plus N ratio on the left uh, y-axis, and I plot the sign ed on the right y-axis, and then the measured voltage level on the x-axis. And you could see that the um, the good channels are up to around over 90 dB sine ad, whereas the bad channels are down to about 67, 70 at best at higher voltage sine ad. So there's you know a good 20 dB difference between those channels and distortion performance. 
Again, this translates to the worst channels are still at 0.05% THD, which is likely not audible. You got to get to the, you know, 0.1 or 1% area until this kind of stuff really is becoming audible, in my opinion. But it is something that Yamaha should do better with. So I wanted to see why it was the case. And I did a kind of a clever measurement here. I looked at the input generator level and I swept it to see what the sign ed was on the output. And you could see on this measurement, the good channels maintained a good high distortion rate, even uh, all the way out to zero dBFS, which is digital full scale. But the problematic channels, as I got to about nine, minus nine dBFS, they dropped from similar distortion at lower levels down to the 70, below 70 dB. So evidently, these, this receiver is having an issue with digital full scale with the with those channels. Um, the likelihood of you actually using a digital full scale signal is pretty low. Most of the time you're listening to movies or, or music, it's not at digital full scale, but there's really no excuse for this. It shouldn't be this way. I've never seen a product, an AV product behave like this. And this kind of perplexed me. Um, I don't think it's audible, but I do think it's it's a housekeeping thing that Yamaha potentially could fix. They're well aware of this HDMI digital full scale issue that I found. So I'm hoping that there's a firmware fix that follows. We will see. I'll let you guys know if I hear anything about that. And then I wanted to show you um, an FFT distortion plot. I like to look at FFTs just to see what the spectra looks like uh, when I run a one kilohertz signal into it. And you could see um, at minus 10 dB FS, excellent distortion uh, spectra here out of the main left and right channels. There's no residual hum, a power supply hum at 60 Hertz, like I see on many AV products. There's no DC offset. I mean, it's really flat down to, you know, below 10 Hertz. And the distortion spectra, this, the third harmonic is like 100, almost 102 dB below the fundamental. And this is at two volts RMS output with a minus 10 dBFS input. That's a really good measurement. So I wanted to see if that zero dBFS issue was a problem with the main channels on the preamp outs. And you could see the distortion right, you know, went up a little bit. It went up about 6 dB, but we're still talking minus 95 dB below the fundamental for the third harmonic. That's an incredibly low distortion measurement. Not something you're gonna hear any problems with. That's good news. But the center channel and the surround channels are the problem. And you could see again, the third harmonic is at minus 70 dB instead of minus 95 or 100. So, at, and this is at minus 10 dBFS. So, and when I went to zero dBFS, it was, you know, maybe about the same, maybe a little bit worse, but there's definitely an issue going on there. I hope Yamaha can resolve it, but I would not use this as a tool or a, as a deterrent to tell you not to buy this receiver because of this one issue that I found. So I wanted to show you um, the signal to noise ratio of this unit at two volts RMS with a zero dB FS input. I got 106 dB and that's with the uh, DSP engaged on the left channel, on the left measurement and in pure direct, I got 111, 112 dB. So pure direct really does make a measurable difference you know, straight to pure direct is about a 6 dB difference in noise. I don't think that this is probably audible because these are both good measurements to begin with. But if you're really a, an audiophile and you're doing multi-channel music or two-channel audio, um, use the pure direct. Just realize though, if you use pure direct, um, you bypass bass management. So if you need bass management, then use a the straight mode. Still a good measurement nonetheless. So now I did the bass management tests and even though this Yamaha is not THX certified, it gives you textbook THX crossovers. If you set the crossovers for 80 hertz, you get, as you can see in this graph, the low pass filter is 24 dB per octave with a minus 6 dB point at 80 hertz. Perfect textbook slope there. The high pass is a second order 12 dB per octave at 80 hertz. Beautiful, just beautiful response there. And you can see even with the DSP engaged because this has a high sampling rate, this thing is flat to 50 kilohertz, which is awesome. I don't even get that with my $24,000 Storm audio processor, which samples at 48 kilohertz. So that's pretty cool. So Yamaha has a base 
extra base mode and and i did a video on this and i'll put it in the card so you can watch it extra base is a necessary feature for those that want to run their speakers large and still have the subwoofer engaged for two channel music you'll notice in most receivers if you put your main speaker is large. You won't have any subwoofer output unless you have a setting like this. Uh, Denon has LFE plus bolt, LFE plus main. They all have different settings for this, but and it works fine. If I use the if I use the extra bass with the main set large, then the large then the the main channels are full frequency range like you would expect, and then it copies that information to the subwoofer and it bases the crossover on whatever you set the main set at eighty hertz or ninety hertz. Whatever is at the main channels crossover at is going to set that for the subwoofer channel, even when you set your mains large. But they have this other feature, which is barely documented in their user manual. And I went back and forth again with Yamaha on this. If you have your main set small and you set extra base on, I argue that shouldn't even be a, an option. They argue that it's intentional. And you can see it does, it does frequency shaping. It adds a bump here to your small speakers at around you know 80 to 100 hertz. And it just does some funkiness to the subwoofer output here. I don't like how that looks, but sometimes how things look don't sound as bad when you actually hear them. Yamaha claims that um, the theory is this is, is by hearing the harmonics of the low frequencies in proper proportions, your brain interprets hearing the lower fundamental, which is not necessarily present in the room. I haven't confirmed this, whether it works or not. Um, I encourage you to try it if you want. Um, and if you guys have tried the extra bass with small speakers, with your speaker set small, give me some comments down below and ask and, and tell me, does it sound fuller or more full when you're blending these small speakers with your subwoofer? I just worry that you could potentially overdrive a small speaker. So if you have really small woofers, but not a lot of output, you might not want to do that. But if you're using a tower and you're base managing it, it, it might work. I don't know. I will test this when I test YPOW. I'm going to do a separate video on that. I'll revisit this and I'll do some in-room measurements and see exactly how it translates. I wanted to also show you that the Yamaha has seven band PEQ per channel, manual PEQ, which is awesome. And you set your bandwidth based on the center frequency divided by the F2 minus F1. And that's how you get your Q. I love the fact that Yamaha has this. I did a video on the web editor where you can enter all your filter coefficients in there. So I'll link that up in here as well. I'll create a playlist on all these videos. And I went and I tested it just to make sure it worked correctly. And I set a, a center frequency of like 32 hertz with a Q of 1.6 and a cut of 8 dB. And that's about what I got here. So it's pretty accurate. Yamaha added some additional frequencies uh, in the past products. They they weren't very they weren't very uh, granular. I mean, you had to go with it maybe six or eight hertz for, per adjustment. They got that down more. So you, it's almost like you can manually set whatever frequency you want. There's definitely more resolution now. Kudos to Yamaha for putting that. And it goes down to like 16 hertz, 15 or 16 hertz. So you could do really low frequency correction. Not a lot of AV processors or a lot of, um, I'm sure, I'm sorry, not a lot of AV receivers have manual PEQ feature like this. So kudos to Yamaha for having that. That's my favorite thing about setting up a receiver when you have this kind of tool arsenal at your disposal, I should say. So I wanted to check the HDMI PLL mode and DAC settings. Um, again, this is a feature I don't often see on AV receivers. I started with the different jitter settings, the level settings, level one, two, three. I barely could measure a difference here. I just couldn't see it. Um, Yamaha basically said it's possible that because my audio precision is, is very low jitter that I won't see the benefit of that. I could understand that as well. So I'll leave it at that, that it's cool that they even have that as an option. You might want to experiment with it and see what you get. Um, I also checked the DAC settings. There's there's three different DAC settings you could set. The sharp roll-off, which is, says removes the out-of-band noises by the filter with steep attenuation characteristics. Then there's the slow roll-off, which removes out-of-band noises with the filter with gentle attenuation. And then there's the short latency, which reduces the audio delay caused by the DAC internal digital filter. This was difficult to measure. I had to really get creative. And in fact, initially I put in my measurement report, I didn't see a difference. And then Yamaha came back and they showed me their measurements, which indicated there was a difference. And they gave me instructions on how to set my audio precision to see it. 
and I found settings in Myotic Precision I didn't even know existed. So thank you, Yamaha, for educating me. So basically, um, by putting a really high resolution measurement and lowering the sampling rate of the input to 44.1 kilohertz, which is CD, you can't really see these differences with higher sampling rates because it pushes it way out of the audio band. And at that, at that point, it becomes a moot a moot setting because you don't really care about the filter characteristics if it's twice the bandwidth of the human hearing so much, right? Um, so you can see here, there's, there's some slight differences. The slow uh, setting actually rolls off first, starts rolling off at around 18 kilohertz, then followed by the short and then the sharp. So there is a difference. I'm not sure if it's audible. I know there's a reviewer, I think it's Andrew Robson that claims he changed these settings and he heard differences. And I question respectfully if it's expectation bias that he heard or if he actually did hear real differences. So that's, I haven't tested this yet to confirm it. So if he did, that's great. And if you hear a difference, then by all means, use this tool that you have at your advantage. It's pretty cool. So like I said, there's barely a frequency response difference. I went and I looked, I put a one kilohertz square wave in and I looked at the various responses and you could see here, um, yeah, there's a bit of overshoot on, I can't even see that graph too well. On the short latency one, there was like an asymmetric overshoot. I think I preferred the sharp roll off and the slow roll off the best, but the slow roll off reduces your bandwidth. So the bottom line on that is I would probably just use the sharp roll off setting. It says right here, I would recommend using the sharp roll off setting to best preserve the bandwidth. So you guys could try it, you know, whatever you think sounds best to you. Um, otherwise just leave it alone. Don't worry about it too much. So next up, I did the power measurements of this receiver and this was a little tricky because there's a lot of nannies on this thing, trying to protect it from overloading, but I'll start and I'll talk about that in a little bit. The frequency response of the amplifier is excellent ruler flat out to 50 kilohertz, which was the sampling rate anyways, 48 K or half the sampling rate, 48 K very good, very clean. Um, I got 150 watts continuous, both channels driven at lower than 0.1%. And I was able to get 186 watts of channel at 8 ohms and 282 watts of channel at 4 ohms at 1% uh, for the 1 kilohertz sweeps with two channels driven. So this thing's powerful. I mean, with two channels driven, this is actually a little bit more powerful than the Marantz SR8015. So there's a lot of power here. But when you start driving four channels, the nanny start kicking in. I was still able to get um, 136 watts with four channels driven at 0.1% and 152 watts at 1%. But then you see like this Nike swoosh symbol crap going on when it's trying to limit and protect the receiver. And mind you, this is with the impedance set high and this is with the eco set off. And there's still nannies involved in this receiver. So they have three levels of nannies and one of them you can't defeat. So next up, I want to show you uh, seven channels driven. This is where the, the receiver starts really protecting itself. Um, unfortunately, it was only giving me 52 watts with seven channels driven. The, uh, the Marantz SR8015 would give me 100 watts with seven channels driven. I really wish Yamaha would re reduce this restriction on their on their protection circuits or on their limiting cir circuits. Again, this probably would never be tripped with program material, music material, but it's annoying on a test bench when I can't show you the full potential of this receiver because it does have more potential than this. So two things I wanna tell you guys, listen to me now and believe me later, as Hans and Franz would say, use the eco off setting. Do not use the on setting under any circumstance unless you're using it as a preamp only. If you're only using the preamp outputs and you're not using the internal amps, then you could put the eco on setting if you want to be a little bit more green. But if you turn the eco on, you're going to be killing power in your receiver. And the same thing goes with the low Z setting. Um, but the low Z setting is actually pretty interesting. With only two channels driven, I see a slight reduction in power with uh, at 8 ohms just because it steps the voltage down a little bit. So you definitely see a little bit lower uh, power. You don't get quite as much power as I did with the high setting, but the eco mode just kills it. Like you get down to like 60 watts, 67 watts, depending on the distortion level. So right there, 
you know not to use eco mode because eco mode just kills the power. So next up, when we look at what the low Z setting is doing uh, with four channels driven, and this just neuters the receiver. It gets us down to 43 watts at one at 0.1 percent and 54 watts at one percent that's from 130 watts a channel so the low z setting wasn't really affecting the eight ohm power setting with two channels driven just a little bit maybe five percent just uh, of uh, power loss in the four ohm setting with two channel with two channels driven in a forum low the power is relatively the same simply because this receiver was already um not taking full advantage of the rails so it wasn't doubling down. It wasn't giving you twice the power in four ohms as it was in eight ohms. So you don't see that low impedance uh, setting messing things up with just two channels. But when you start running three, four, five channels, that that low impedance setting is just devastating to the dynamics of this receiver. And worse than the eco mode, I would not use that low impedance setting at, under any circumstance at all. That's how bad it is. And the thing that really bothers me is in the past, Yamaha used to have like an advanced cali advanced setting in their receivers that you had to use like a couple of different hidden keys in order to get to. Now they just put it, <clears throat> excuse me. Now they just put it in the most popular section of the menus. They literally put it in the speaker setup menu where everybody's going to go to set up their receiver. And I can't tell you how many people that I've consulted in the past that have Yamaha receivers that said, oh yeah, I put my, I, the first thing I did was I put the receiver in the low setting because I have six ohm speakers or I have four ohm speakers. I'm like, don't do that. It's there for UL testing only. We've done several videos on that. Someone down below is going to say, I've got six ohm ELAC speakers. Should I use the low setting? The answer is no, don't, don't do it. Leave it on the high setting. And I, I really want to, uh, Scold Yamaha for making this even a more accessible, devastating uh, configuration setting. So leave it, <clears throat> leave it on eight ohm minimum, like, and that's the default setting. Do not change that. So here's the power sweep table: um, continuous two channels driven, 150 watts. One channel driven, kil one kilohertz sweep at one percent is 200 watts. Um, that's really, that's awesome. I think it was 175. I have a typo here. This is one channel driven. Um, 175 watts, one channel driven at 0.1%. Then we have two channels driven, 186 watts at 1%, 168 watts at 0.1%. That's above the uh, spec. This is a 150 watt rated receiver, so that's really good. And you can just look at all these measurements here. Four channels driven again, 136 at 0 0.1, 152 at 1%. Five channels driven, um, still pretty decent, 71 watts at 1.1, 81 at uh, 1%. So I really wish they would just loosen this up a little bit because this uh, this tripping circuit for when it detects a uh, constant test signal on uh, is just neutering the receiver in the in these power tests. So I wanted to show you the distortion at with an FFT at one watt is not that great. So I got 71 dB at the second harmonic. I, I'm a little puzzled by this because I was getting much better results with the preamp section. Again, this is still like 0.05% or, or lower distortion. So it's not audible, but their competition does better with their amplifier sections. So I think hopefully whatever they do with the HDMI thing that I found, maybe they can apply it here as well. But I showed you, uh, here's a power versus sine ad, two channels driven, eight ohms. And it's basically confirming the same thing. So even at low power levels, you know, it's it's constantly at around 70 dB sine ad. Not horrible, but just not state of the art, but it's there. So hopefully we can see improvement on that in the future. And last but not least, I did a cross chalk uh, all channels driven except the un except the one channel undriven to, to do the test with all those other channels being the disturber. That's the worst possible crosstalk measurement you can do. I've got, even with that said, it was um, on the amplifier side, it was at 60 dB, minus 60 dB at 10 kilohertz, and it was about 20 dB better if I just measured the preamp section, the preamp output. So that's excellent. 
anything about you know anything better than 60 db channel to channel isolation you know 10 20 kilohertz is is really good not a problem there so yeah that's it guys uh it's not perfect but this receiver has a lot of potential you saw how incredibly good some of these measurements were like the analog preamp section there's good parts in this thing i mean it's built really well it's heavy the thing weighs like 40 something pounds it's not a lightweight it's got a big power supply yes there's some issues with the uh how it's handling the digital full scale with hdmi but i've already reported that to yamaha so things can only get better from there so i hope you guys found this video useful i'm going to be doing a follow-up on ypow and then i'll do like a whole review formal review after the, probably after the new year I hope you guys have a great holiday. I hope you enjoy this. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and like. And until next time, my friends.